word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Megan, for worship leading and for scripture and prayer. Thank you, Barbara Jantz, for prayer of the church. Barbara Jantz is the newest member of the caring team, and we welcome her to that role. We're thankful for that. Anybody else appreciate the skit with 3JYF? Amen. And I should say, Susan Lamb was the one that took the lead on planning that, and, 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 and Kendra has been uh, adding some assistance to that. So we're, we're thankful for that. And the skit, that's a nice summary, a nice way to do a scripture reading sometimes, right? So may we have more ideas generated. It doesn't just have to be kids that do skits, right? Just putting that out there. It's the last day of 2023. Who says we can't turn over some new leaves in 2024? I'm especially thankful for the music today. I love that song, Ancient Words. Hmm. These lyrics speak deeply to me, and it makes me think, may 2024 be a year of a deeper study of the scriptures, of the ancient words. I'm going to ask for the first slide. You'll recognize these. Ancient words, excuse me, words of life, words of hope. Give us strength, help us cope. Who doesn't need that? This coming year. Who hasn't needed that this past year? In this world where we roam, ancient words will guide us home. And then some of the other lyric, if you, if you missed it, the refrain. Ancient words ever true, changing me, changing you. We have come, and when we come with open hearts, oh, let the ancient words in part, we sang holy words of our faith handed down to this age. And I'm moved by this next phrase. Came to us through sacrifice. The ancient words the scriptures put together weren't an accident and wasn't just, oh, la, la, we're going to look on the computer. There's been tremendous sacrifice for them to be handed down through the ages. Hmm. So I am struck by the power and the strength of the ancient words. Did you notice the first word of the Isaiah 60 text that Megan read? Anyone remember it offhand? It's the word arise. The Hebrew word is kum or kumi, and it's translated to arise. It could also be translated to rise up, to appear, to exist, to rebuild. So listen to this first verse again with some alternate translations of arise. Arise, shine, for the light has come. Appear, shine, for your light has come. Exist, shine, for your light has come. Rebuild, shine, for your light has come. Rise up, get up, shine, for the light has come. There's a little more I want to say on that. Before I do, I want to invite you to arise, to actually physically stand up. I think it's important to know who you're worshiping beside and spend a moment to introduce yourself to someone close by or in your proximity. Would you do that, please?
So I'm going to invite you to turn with me to Mark 5. The story starts in verse 22. So if you have your Bibles or your devices and you take a peek there, I think it would benefit, um, benefit you here. So in this text, excuse me, Mark 5, 22, a leader of the synagogue, so a Jewish guy, Jairus, begs Jesus to come to his very sick daughter. But then word comes to them that this daughter has died. It's tragedy. But Jesus says something in verse 36 that I find fascinating. He says, do not fear, only believe. And actually, I think that's a phrase of Jesus that if you're going to write it on a card, it has relevance for other areas of our lives. I think Jesus would say to us in, in a in a, a lot of varied places, do not fear, only believe. Have faith in what Jesus is doing, even if the, the timetable doesn't make sense. Then note what is said and what happens in verse 41 of Mark 5. And that's the next slide. So he finds out Jesus in this group, finds out that Jairus' daughter is dead. Jesus says, do not fear, only believe. Then Jesus takes the girl by the hand and says, Talitha kum. Don't miss that. That's the Hebrew word for arise, to get up to exist, to appear, to live. This is a powerful word. Jesus is saying this to this little girl. Talitha kum, little girl, arise, get up, appear, rebuild, exist, live. And immediately the girl gets up and begins to walk about. I love this. This is another example of Jesus reaching the broken and the lost and extending hope. Little girl, I mean, if she's dead, Jesus isn't standing up and making a command. I think Jesus is down there with her in her darkness and her death. Similar to how Jesus is there in our darkness. And Jesus would also say that to us. Arise, get up. But here in this story, he says this to the little girl. And she gets up. And she walks. And how do you think Jairus responded? Yay. He thought she was dead. His daughter was dead. I'm telling you, even though he's a synagogue ruler and probably, you know, a little prompt and, and, and proper, I'm sure he just went after it. Woo! Right? Story doesn't tell us all that. Well, we could read into that because he's a human being. Hmm. So why do I share this? I have a phrase when I do sermon prep or if I'm coaching people on sermons, I have a phrase, so what? So why? Ask that question. So why do I share this? Church, I believe Jesus is saying this to us this year. And it's the next slide. Heston Mennonite Church, brothers and sisters gathered here, arise, get up. Exist, rebuild, live. The light has come. The glory of God has been revealed. The light switch has not been turned off. May 2024 be a year of healing and light. Is Jesus knocking? 
at your door? Somebody's knocking at your door. So I have this coupon here. It's a coupon from my daughter Marie. It's a coupon for one solo at church. You know, you got to have creative things at Christmas. And you have to, you know, kind of change things up a little bit. I try to be a little bit creative. And so some of you know that Marie and Ken had a concert here last night. And I was thinking, hmm, how can we incorporate that in here? So I'm going to invite Marie and Ken to come forward. They're going to do the song, Somebody's Knocking at Your Door. And keep in mind with our context, church, somebody's knocking at our door. The light of the world is knocking at our door. And then just so you don't get too excited, I'm going to come back and do the second half of the sermon when they're done. <laughs> Thank you, Marie and Ken. So, full disclosure, I said, Marie, maybe we should sing a duet. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't hear me. Church, arise, get up, exist, rebuild. Live, really live, individually, 
in families, in a church, in our community, in our world. May 2024 be a year of healing and light. So the next slide I have is an invitation for us to embrace Jesus' words. I think this is one way that we will get some help for 2024. These aren't new passages for many of us, but I'm going to read them for you. John 8, 12, Jesus is talking, and Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus gives light to us. John 12, 46 reads, Jesus continues talking, and he says, I have come as light into the world so that everyone, everyone means what? Everyone. Everyone means what? Everyone who believes in me should not remain in darkness. And we have some believers in Jesus here this morning, right? Our darkness should be less this year. Amen? And Jesus also says some things in verse 36. He says, while you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become the children of light. Children and people who are light of the world. Who don't take their light and hide it under a bushel. No, we're going to let it yeah, we did that in Sunday school this morning. Church, I believe embracing, reminding ourselves of Jesus' words will help us get up, to arise, to rebuild, to exist in this coming year. Let me ask you another question. Do you want 2024 to be a good year? I mean, really. Are you fine with how things are? Okay. I see some of you. Do you want 2024 to be a better year? I do. I'm ready to leave 2023 in the rearview mirror. You know, that doesn't mean it was all bad, but there was plenty. Some of it's my own fault. Thank you. Some of you get that for yourselves, right? So I propose this challenge to help us make 2024 a better year. So I'm offering this. Here's the challenge. The next slide. Let's make 2024 the year of reading the scriptures more deeply. If you take this challenge... I guarantee you will be different. I guarantee you'll be different. You'll be different as an individual. You'll be different in your family. You'll be different at church. You will be different in the community. And you will help the world be different. So some suggestions. I was talking to a friend and this friend was telling me how he listens to the Bible on his commute to work. And that has helped him. I love that. That's powerful. That could work for some of you. Listening to the scriptures. That doesn't help me. I'm not particularly auditory. I need to seal it. I see it. I like to touch it. I like to feel it. So some of my suggestions are, some of you are familiar with the read through the Bible in a year, Bibles. Some of you have them on your shelves and you haven't looked at them for a long time. 2024, this is the challenge. And it's a challenge to do a read through the Bible. And some of these, these Bibles are, are partitioned out 
So you don't get stuck in Leviticus, okay, and then give up after about a month. Pay attention to that. That's a real thing. I mean, there's some merit in reading through it, but sometimes you got to read a little faster, okay? Here's a Bible I used one year, and it had a reading program in the back. So after I read it, and some of you have lists, you actually like to write them out, not have them on your phone, and you like to cross them out. That's me. And that worked for me. Now, it's a challenge when you get behind, not to, to, to panic, but to stay with it. Keep finding ways to make it work. And for me also, I just want to say, sometimes what the Bible looks like and how practical it is, that makes a difference for me. So maybe for some of you. So, so doing a read through the Bible in a year or two years, having a smaller Bible worked for me. Maybe you just need a totally different version of the Bible. Some of you are familiar with the story. It's a w whole different way to read the scriptures. And I actually have this dream of sometimes getting a group of people who want to read this and then do a study once a week where we process the section that we've, we've read. The story is, a, is a different and then here's another translation. It's called The Voice. Anybody have heard of that one? That too can be a, a challenge in an interesting way. There are lots of ideas out there. Hmm. But you know the best Bible reading program? I mean, the best. Hands down. Okay. You're listening. Actually, it's a little like the best exercise program. <laughs> the best Bible reading program is the one you'll do. That's the best one. So you need to find for yourself what works for you. Sometimes you need to be challenged, sometimes not. But it's the one that you'll do. Here's another idea. Tomorrow's January 1st. It's 31 days in January. 31 Proverbs. Maybe start with a proverb a day. There's some young adults who have heard that one before from me and have done it. A couple years ago, we did a Sunday school class on that. So then you can't be like, well, it's January 5th. What, where am I at? <clears throat> Proverbs 5. January 13, Proverbs 13. What's the best Bible reading program? It's the one you'll do. Other ways. And I don't recommend, but if it works for you, it's okay. I don't re recommend starting in Genesis and just going straight through. So for me, I, if I'm starting in Genesis, I'll put a bookmark in Genesis and then try to read Genesis going forth through the, the Torah, the first five books. I'll try to have one section there. And then I'll put a bookmark in Psalms. You know, there's 150 Psalms. That gets you halfway through the year if you do a Psalm a day. And then I say, put a bookmark in the New Testament. Put it in the Gospels. Don't get stuck. Read about Jesus and then Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, or Matthew, Mark, Luke, go to Acts, come back to John, or start in John, and then do some letters. You know the best Bible reading program? Thank you. Let's make 2024 the year of reading the scriptures more deeply. Ancient words, ever true, changing me, and changing you. Anyone familiar with that movie, um, Field of Dreams, baseball movie? Okay, and, and there's this dream of the person to, to build this, this beautiful ballpark, and then the legends of the game would come, right? And, and, and the voice the guy heard goes something like, if you build it, 
they will come. If you build it, they will come. Does that sound halfway accurate? Would you say that with me? Just humor me. If you build it, and, and use that kind of dramatic voice. If you build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. So years ago, I used that phrase to switch into relating it to Scripture reading and finding meaning and purpose. And so using that phrase but changing it, my phrase is, if you read it, they will come. Not the legends of the past, but the answers to life. The light that you need and the darkness that you have, that we all have. If you read it, they will come. If you read it, they will come. If you read it, the scriptures, the answers will come. Last slide I have this morning. I believe a good biblical knowledge is a significant foundation for a personal living faith in God and healthily living into having a strong church community. If you read it, they will come. I also like this from the Confession of Faith in the Mennonite Perspective. This paragraph about the Bible, about the scriptures. The Bible is the essential book of the church. Can a brother get an amen? Yeah, it's essential. Through the Bible, the Holy Spirit nurtures the obedience of faith to Jesus Christ and guides the church in shaping its teaching, witnessing, and worship. We commit ourselves to persist and delight in reading, studying, and meditating on the scriptures. We participate in the church's task of interpreting the Bible and discerning what God is saying in our time by examining things in light of scripture. So it's essential, it's important. It's not the only tool we use for discernment, but it's important. Ancient words, ever true, changing me, changing you. We interpret, we think about, we dwell in, we meditate on, but we do not fight with it. Amen? We discern what God is saying in our time by examining things in the light of Scripture. Insights and understandings which we bring to the interpretation of the Scripture are to be tested in the faith community. And part of the testing is discerning together. There's more there. Ancient words ever true. What? Changing you, changing me, changing us, changing the church. I'm going to conclude with Psalm 119, which we'll sing here shortly. Psalm 119, 130 reads, The unfolding of God's words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple, to the ordinary, to the normal. The unfolding of God's word spoke to Simeon and Anna, these, these normal persons that we don't hear a ton about, but are also part of our story. And as you read the scriptures, are you allowing God to unfold God's plan of love and care and faithfulness and commitment? Will you allow that to happen? 
Will you allow that to change you and not just use the scriptures or what you think about them because maybe you haven't read it for a while? Will you allow the scriptures to change you? And then I love Psalm 119, 105. It reads, God's word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I think that speaks to us individually. Who doesn't need guidance for your own personal walk? I think that speaks to our families. Because if your family is like mine, you need some guidance and some light because everything is imperfect. Amen? Oh, and the church isn't perfect either. We need Jesus' light to shine and guide us, lead us as a church. And we need that light to know when we've pushed too hard or we haven't pushed hard enough or we are not paying attention to love in our heart in that interaction with that person. We're going to need it in the community this year. Jesus' light that shines in and through us, that we're impacted by scriptures, by God's word in us. We're going to need that in the community this year. You know we have a presidential election this year, right? We have to handle it better as a church. We have to. And I would be remiss if I didn't say, well, there's going to be other things that will be a struggle in 2024, right? Right? Our world needs Jesus' light. And Jesus' light through us and in us, in our workplaces. But also, when we say things to people, and we interact with people with different views about whatever, we need the light and love of Jesus in what we're doing and how we're going to be. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Let's pray. Lord God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, speak in deeply to our beings. Help us as we step into the new year and help each one to be challenged to draw closer to you, to be drawn closer to you, to be better, to be light-filled, to be love-filled. Help each of us to deepen our commitment to you and also to the reading of your scriptures these ancient words that are powerful and true, that give us light to guide our way, that give us understanding and healing and perspective. Help us, Lord God, to get up, to arise, to heal, to walk, to live, to exist, to rebuild. Thank you, Lord that you are knocking at all of our doors, not just at mine, but all the hearers this morning. You are knocking at the doors of our heart, wanting to be more a part of their and our lives. Thank you for that. And I bless you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen.